Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Fish Door County TV. Well, as you already know, we're right in the heart of the fall season here in Wisconsin. And for the outdoors men and women, it really provides a lot of great opportunities to get outside and enjoy some traditional fall activities. From hunting, to fishing, to nature hikes, even just getting out and observing the fall colors. There's always something cool to do outside in the state during this time of the year. Now here in the Door County area, we have another great fall tradition, and that's the return of the four-year-old king salmon up the, to the Strawberry Creek facility here in Sturgeon Bay. Today, we're gonna to show you the entire process from the stocking of the fingerlings in the spring of the year at the same Strawberry Creek facility, all the way to the return of these big four-year-old mature king salmon. We're gonna talk with some biologists and some technicians, and they're gonna give us all the inside information on how this entire process works. Stay tuned, guys. We've got a great show straight ahead. We'll be back in about one minute. One of the guys we got to meet today and spend some time with was Nick Legler. Now Nick is a young fisheries biologist who basically headed up the entire project here today at the Strawberry Creek facility. Now Nick really has a feel for what's going on with the salmon fishery out in the lake here and he was able to give us some insight on how this entire process works. Okay so today we're here at Strawberry Creek at the DNR's salmon spawning facility in Sturgeon Bay and this we're here today collecting eggs for our salmon stocking program. And right behind me here, you have the Strawberry Creek Pond. And the, the whole operation here actually started earlier in the spring. Uh, in the spring, we stocked about 175,000 small uh, Chinook salmon, just a, a few inches big, into this pond here. We held those Chinook salmon, those young Chinook salmon, in the pond for about six or seven weeks or so. And then we released them. Um, the Chinook salmon, they go through a, a physiological change, which is called smolting. Um, they're basically preparing themselves to, to transition from living in the river uh, to living out in the lake. And at that smolting time is when we release them.
So those little Chinooks in the spring left. They went out to uh, Lake Michigan. Sturgeon Bay is probably about a half mile uh, from the pond here. And the fish then went and they, they grew up in the lake. And eventually they'll, they'll return to this river where they were stocked uh, to, to spawn. And most of the Chinook salmon, they'll return at probably three or four years old. Occasionally we'll see a five-year-old coming back in the fall. And we'll also sometimes see younger jacks, uh, males that are, that are even younger. And today we're basically here collecting those fish as they return to spawn. Uh, the fish are, they come up the river here and they basically get trapped into this pond where we then take and we have a, it's called a crowder. Um, it's basically a little fence gate that we push down the pond uh, to crowd all the salmon into the, the far end here. And we'll take those salmon, we use a hoist, we'll, we'll use the crane to lift those salmon up. We'll put the salmon into a CO2 bath. Uh, the CO2 bath is it's basically just water that has CO2 bubbled into it and it calms the fish down. Uh, it basically takes the oxygen out of the water so the fish, um, they basically uh, get calmed down so that we can handle them easier. And then we basically take the fish and we'll put them through um, our knockout machine. It's a pneumatic uh, machine with compressed air that runs through it and basically bashes the fish right on the head and, and knocks them out completely. Um, from there, we'll send the fish through kind of our biological uh, station where we'll collect lengths, we'll collect weights on those fish. We'll also look, th look at the fish for, for fin clips and we'll use that information that we're collecting uh, to, to help us manage the fishery and to make guided management decisions. Uh, from there, the fish get, uh, go down to the, the egg collection uh, process, which is the main reason we're here today, is to collect those salmon eggs. And we have staff here from the Wild Rose Fish Hatchery, and they'll actually uh, use compressed air to remove the eggs from the large females and then they'll fertilize those eggs uh, with the, the milt or the sperm from, from the males. And those eggs are then taken and they're, they're water hardened. Uh, initially the eggs from the, the salmon are very soft, um, but once you mix those eggs with water, um, they'll, they'll basically absorb water uh, for, a, for a couple hours and they'll get nice and hard uh, before the eggs are eventually taken to the hatcheries. So one of the concerns this year with Strawberry Creek and the salmon returning to the, to the stream has been low water. Uh, the water levels here in Sturgeon Bay and really throughout Wisconsin have been very low this year. Um, the current lake levels in, in Michigan are near record lows and that obviously causes difficulties for those salmon that are trying to, to return up the rivers to spawn. And one of the things that we do here at Strawberry Creek to help combat that, that low water is we have a pump. So we have a large pump that's stationed down near the Sturgeon Bay uh, Canal area and then we have a pipeline that runs probably about a half mile or so up to the, the spawning facility here, just upstream of the facility. And during our fall egg collections we will run that pump continuously 24 hours a day pumping water 
up into this facility, which ultimately flows downstream. And all that water that we're pumping in will hopefully be enough to, to bring those fish in. Um, this year, the pump alone wasn't enough. Um, even with the pump running, the water level was so low that the fish were really struggling to get up. And we here at the DNR, we applied for uh, dredging permits and we actually did a little bit of dredging down at the river mouth to basically try to remove some of those sediments and, and create a, a channel for those fish to get up. Um, even with the dredging, I, I think the fish were still struggling because the water level has just been so low. Um, luckily, this, this weekend, we, we got a lot of rain. Um, th this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, it pretty much rained continuously uh, throughout the days, and that really helped us here today. Um, last week, Wednesday, Thursday, I was here at the pond, and there were very few fish in the pond. There were very few Chinooks, but with the rain that we got this weekend, it, it definitely increased the flows and brought the water levels up enough that we were able to get some fish into the, the pond for our egg collection today. You know, one of the other people we got a chance to talk to was Randy Larson. Now, Randy is a hatchery supervisor at the Wild Rose State Fish Hatchery. Randy kind of gave us a summary of what happens once these eggs are taken here at the Strawberry Creek facility, all the way up until they arrive at Wild Rose and eventually become the salmon fingerlings that will be stocked into the Lake Michigan system next spring. The first thing we do is we mix the milk with the eggs and we stir that all up gently and mix it up and uh, I don't know if everybody realizes it, but even though the milt and the eggs are mixed together, no fertilization has taken place yet. Once it's all mixed up, then I put it in another bucket of water and gently stir it again for about 10 seconds. And research and stuff has showed us that most of the fertilization with the uh, milt becoming active and swimming into this little hole in the egg called a micropile, most of that takes place in about 30 seconds. But generally what I do is I like to leave them for about two minutes just to, to make sure everything is finished. Um, once the fertilization is done, then the eggs are actually rinsed in fresh water to take out any excess mucus or milt or blood or debris, whatever is in there. And the eggs are rinsed clean. And then they're put in tubs where we have the vitamin B thiamine in there at a thousand parts per million. And we'll actually let those eggs in that thiamin mixture for two hours and what they actually do is they water harden up and they will absorb that thiamin and they will swell up to about twice their size and then at that point they're capable to handle and transport. Before they even get into the incubation area uh, the eggs are once again disinfected in the same iodophore solution but a new one mixed up back at the hatchery for another 15 minutes. Then the eggs are measured and basically put into incubation units with uh, we call heath trays or heat stacks uh, basically incubating them on uh, 50 degree water or so there they'll remain on those trays for 45 to 60 days and then after that the fryer put back on trays cleaned up one more time then they're put into start tanks where they'll begin feeding and then the whole process starts over where we'll just continually feed them. As they grow, they'll go from star tanks to eventually uh, larger tanks and eventually they'll go out into raceways where we will raise them through uh, this fall, this winter time, next spring and then those fish will actually leave the hatchery at about 100 to the pound sometime in probably late April, uh, May, possibly even June yet.
Well, as always, guys, it was great to be down here working with the Wisconsin DNR and getting kind of a behind-the-scenes look at all the work that goes into making sure we have a great fishery here, not only in the Door County area, but the entire state of Wisconsin. We want to thank them as always, and we also want to thank all the volunteers that were down here helping out because they really play a big role in the entire process as well. And of course, we want to thank all of you guys for watching, and be sure to tune in again next week for another episode of Fish Door County TV. Thank you.